Welcome to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. Join us as we review our favorite RPGs, collectible card games, MMOs, video games, PC games, and bring up interesting topics and things that we'd like to share with everyone. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, assigned to Ragnarok Story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. Welcome back to the Creative Playing Podcast Network. Jim and Kelly here. It's RPG Day 2016. And what do we got for today? Well, for the 19th, we have Best Way to Learn a New Game. Well, I think the best way to learn a new game is um, you kind of, depending on the game, I mean, mm-hmm. this is like, you know, you can't just do, um, a, just can't just jump right in with the role playing. Yeah. Unless, of course, there's pre met pre made like characters. Or, uh, a starter set. Type exactly, a starter yeah. set. Actually, for an RPG, I would say a starter set is the best way. Yeah. And from what I see, what I've seen of uh, games and stuff, mm-hmm. I would say that Star Wars role playing game really has one of the finest mm-hmm. um, starter sets. The, the beginner systems. game boxes. Exactly. Um, just the way they have the pre made characters and stuff. Um, yeah, I, I think they, that, and just how it has dice and everything, mm-hmm. whereas, you know, it's a little, there's more of a learning curve with, say, Dungeons and Dragons, mm-hmm. like, because you can't just have, there's, you can't just have the, um, what's the right word, you can't have, like, the cheat sheet the same way, because yeah. there's, you, you have an actual character sheet that you have mm-hmm. to learn to use, whereas with the Star Wars, it's a little, you know... Star Wars has got the scary narrative dice, and what, what Kelly's referring to is the, the character portfolios were put a, together amazingly well, describing what your character can do on your turn, as well as how the rather confusing dice work, which, by the way, once you play one game session, the dice are no longer intimidating. It's an yeah. amazing game, and the dice work so amazingly. I mean... I'd love to see a fantasy game that uses those kind of dice. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Um, so, for an RPG game, uh, if it was RPG, I definitely want to say Starter Set, I think, is mm-hmm. the, the best way, especially if you have a completely brand new player yeah. who's never really played the game at all. Mm-hmm. Um, starter Sets often, I think, are designed nowadays to be more user-friendly user to yeah. the new user. Because one of the things that's also good in the Star Wars starter set is it introduces rules as the game progresses. So mm-hmm. you see one thing, you get comfortable with the dice. Okay. Now, oh, we're rolling initiative. And now we're getting more abilities. So that way you're slowly learning the whole game in one four to six hour game session. Mm-hmm. And you're not getting dumped with all the rules all at once. Yeah. But for certain like board games or mm-hmm. that type of stuff... Well, remember, it's RPG day. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so it's strictly in the yeah. RPG circle. Yeah, well, because yeah. the other things you can just sort of jump in and mm-hmm. learn as you go. Uh, this, yeah, RPGs, yeah. you've really got to... So I think starter sets are the best, though, because they are formulated mm-hmm. to assist newer players yeah. into it. They're, they're, they're kind of, you know, handicap accessible. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a handicap! Oh, my hey, God! Hey, in golf, they call it a handicap. When you're a newer player and you have a handicap because you're not as good, it's not a negative thing. See, me personally, I would say for my choice would be to game with someone who's already versed and good at the rules, but is willing to be patient with you. So I would say an experienced, patient mentor would be the best way for me. Followed by, of course, the beginner sets that are put together. Like, even the D&D beginner set was put together very well because it started with easy NPCs for a new GM to learn how to use them. To super complicated NPCs, which 
and they gave tips on how to play the NPCs. Except when your group waits outside their door and massacres them in one shot. <laughs> and then he drops his glass staff on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we're going to go with the combination of beginner boxes and a experienced, experienced patient, patient mentor. mentor. Alright guys, let us know what you think is the best way to learn a new game. Alright, thank you for listening. Hey gamers, Jim here from Creative Play and Podcast Network. If you're in the Tucson area this September and October, I've got a special message for you. Hey, this is Karen from RinCon. We are having our convention from September 30th through October 2nd here in Tucson, Arizona. Come out and uh, play every kind of game under the sun with us. We've got role-playing, board games, minifigs, um, CCGs, we've got Artemis, we have panels with special guests, and this year the theme is steampunk. So uh, get out your, uh, dust off your dirigibles, get out your chapeaus, and put them on. Come on down. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. And feel free to enjoy our other shows, such as D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition and Scion Ragnarok and Roll, a Scion hero to Ragnarok story. Thank you for listening.